couldn't you sleep? Oh, uh, I don't sleep that much, really. Four, five hours a night, if I'm lucky. Uh, I'm quintessentially restless. <laughs> Why couldn't you sleep? Oh, uh... Insomnia? No. Bad dreams? No. A pee? Uh, no, I didn't have to. No, 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 no. A P. A P. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it. Um, no, I'm no princess. Uh, an an unsettling nocturnal desire then to 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 end the heartaches and thousand of natural shocks the flesh is heir to. Not so much. Um, I think it was more the next line, actually. The next. Yes. <laughs> a consummation devoutly to be wished. That's the one. Oh. That's why I couldn't sleep because because, because, because of, of a consummation, consummation devoutly, devoutly to be wished. To be wished. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Do you ever wonder if he's asking the right question? Who? Hamlet. Which question? To be or not to be? I don't think that's really the question at all. Oh no? What's the question? To act or not to act. To do or leave undone. And speaking of undone... Who are you? I'm the one with the perfect breasts, remember? Oh, yes, yes. If you want them, they're yours. If you want me, I'm yours. If you want my life now or ever, I'm yours and yours and only ever yours. Nina. Shadow! I beg your pardon, Gwendolyn. Did you say Ernest? Yes. <laughs> but it's not Mr. Ernest Worthing that is my guardian. It is his brother, his elder brother. Ernest never told me he had a brother. Well, I'm sorry to say they've not been on good terms for a long time now. Oh, that accounts for it. And now that I think of it, I have never heard any man mention his brother. The subject seems to be distasteful for most men. No, thank you. You've lifted a load from my mind. I was growing almost anxious. It would have been terrible if any cloud came across the friendship like ours. <laughs> Of course, you are quite, quite sure that it is not Mr. Ernest Worthing that is your guardian. Quite sure. In fact, I'm going to be his. I beg your pardon. Oh, Gwendolyn, there's no reason I should make a secret of it to you. My little county newspaper paper is sure to chronicle the fact next week. Mr. Ernest Worthing and I are engaged to be married. <laughs> Oh, my darling Cecily, <laughs> I think there must be a slight error. Mr. Ernest Worthing is engaged to me. The announcement will appear in the Morning Post on Saturday at the latest. I am afraid you must be under some misconception. Mr. Ernest proposed to me exactly ten minutes ago. <laughs> well, that is certainly very curious. <laughs> For he proposed to me yesterday afternoon at 5.30. If you care to verify the incident, great, do so. I never travel without my should always have something sensational to read on the train. I'm so sorry, Cecily, if it's of any disappointment to you, but I am afraid that I have the prior claim. It would distress me more than I can tell you if it caused you any mental or physical anguish, but I feel bound to point out that since Ernest proposed to you, he clearly has changed his mind. <laughs> if the poor fellow has been entrapped into any foolish promise, I shall consider it my duty to rescue him at once, and with a firm hand. <laughs> if my dear boy has been entangled into anything, I shall never reproach him with it after we are married. Do you allude to me, Miss Cardew, with an entanglement? You are presumptuous. On an occasion of this kind, it becomes more than a moral duty to speak one's mind. It becomes a pleasure 
Do you suggest, Miss Fairfax, that I entrapped Ernest into an engagement? How dare you! Now is not the time to wear the shallow mask of manners. When I see a spade, I call it a spade. I am glad to say that I have never seen a spade. <laughs> it is obvious that our social spheres have been widely different. But I do think it is their husbands' faults if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps. Else bring out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us. Why, we have galls. Though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell, and have their palates both for sweet and sour, as husbands have. Then let them use us well, else let them know. The ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Mm -hmm. 